Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Sony FE 12-24mm f2.8 GM. 12-24mm is one of the most challenging focal ranges in terms of the optical design. Sony combines this already challenging focal range with bright aperture and relatively low weight. In this video we will take a look at the performance of the 12-24 GM in combination with a7R4 and a7 IV, and I will try to help you decide whether you should consider getting one. 12-24mm focal range offers extremely wide to wide field of view. Shooting at 12mm can be rather challenging. You need to work a lot with the foreground, which is extremely emphasized, and also with the horizon. If you get it right, you will get very immersive and impressive images. If the situation doesn't allow you to do that, you can always zoom in to take advantage of more all-round usable focal lengths such as 16, 20 or 24mm. I think that it is a very useful and quite versatile focal range and a great complement to 24-70mm to standard zooms. 12-24 to is 13.7cm long and it weighs 847 grams. It is not a small lens in absolute terms, but it is a very small lens by 12 to 24 mm f2.8 standards. It is roughly as big and heavy as an average 24 to 70 mm f2.8, so it is definitely manageable, especially on Gen 4 bodies with larger grip. The build quality is identical to other Sony G Master lenses, which means that it is very good. The other construction is actually made of plastics, but these plastics are very high quality and they say weight. Some of my G-Master lenses are now more than 3 years old and they have held up very well, so I'm not concerned about that at all. The mount is metal of course, and there is a gasket around the mount. 12-24 GM is comprehensively weather sealed as expected at this price point. The front element of the 12-24 is concave, which is again to be expected at this focal range. That means that it has an integrated lens hood which reduces flaring and even more importantly, it protects the front element. It also means that there is no filter thread, so the only option are system filters. The lens cover attaches over the integrated lens hood. It has two release buttons and it is very well made, so no complaints here. Regarding the control elements, there is everything that you would expect. The zoom ring is very smooth and the resistance is completely even. The throw is pretty short, which is a good thing in my opinion in this case. Focusing ring is extremely smooth. It has a very reasonable amount of resistance and nice grippy texture. It is focused by wire system of course, but it is linear. Focusing at these focal lengths is very easy, so this focusing ring is more than sufficient for that. There is also an AF-MF switch on the left side and function button, which can be customized in the menu. So how about the optical qualities? I have tested this lens with a very demanding 61 megapixel sensor in A7R4A. This sensor is very demanding and it doesn't have a low pass filter, so it should be a proper test for the optical qualities. Let's start at 12mm. The central sharpness is perfect right from f2.8. It can't get any better than this, so it stays the same until f11. The diffraction only starts at f16, where we can see lower contrast. The corner sharpness at f2.8 is very good, but there is a room for small improvement, which can be seen at f4. It stays this sharp until f11 and the diffraction again starts at f16. The situation at 18mm is very similar. The central sharpness is perfect right from f2.8 with no room for improvement, so it stays this sharp until f11. We can see a decrease of contrast at f16 caused by the diffraction. This time the corner sharpness is absolutely perfect at f2.8. f4, 5.6, 8 and 11 look the same. Once again the diffraction only starts at f16. There are no surprises at 24mm either. The perfection in the center of the frame continues, so the sharpness is as good as it gets from f2.8 to f8. There is a small decrease of contrast at f11, but it is still perfectly usable. The corners are perfectly sharp from f2.8, but there is a little bit of noise caused by the profile corrections. The noise is mostly gone at f4 and completely gone at f5.6. f8 looks perfect as well. f11 is still mostly diffraction free. 
The contrast only starts to decrease at f16. Well, what can I say? The optical performance is fantastic despite the extreme focal range. This might be the most impressive lens that I've ever tested on this scene. I have tested some lenses with this level of optical performance before, but not in combination with such extreme focal range. The contrast and the color reproduction are excellent as well, so the real-world images match the results from the testing scene. It is also once again an evidence that the size of the E-mount is not a limiting factor when it comes to the lens design. If Sony can make an E-mount lens such as this one, it doesn't really matter what the competition says about the size of the E-mount. Regarding the distortion and vignetting, there is a noticeable amount of barrel distortion at 12mm, which turns into pincushion distortion around 16mm. The vignetting is also visible, especially at the white end. Fortunately, profile corrections will completely fix both. The only negative effect will be a moderate amount of noise at f2.8 at certain focal lengths, as I mentioned during the sharpness segment of this video. The minimum focus distance is 22 cm, which translates to 0.14 times magnification. That allows you to get an interesting perspective with the close-up shots. It isn't the best semi-macro lens, but at this focal range it clearly isn't meant to be. The bokeh is fine. It can actually provide some subject separation as you get close to 24mm and the rendition of the blurred background is quite nice. It has 9 aperture blades, which seems to be enough. More importantly, this lens produces beautiful sun stars, especially at f11 and f16, where you can utilize the outstanding optical performance of this lens at narrow apertures. The autofocus works great. It is very fast, accurate and there is no hunting at all. It works great with both a7 IV and a7R4A. All of the smart features including real-time IAF and BERT AF work as well of course. The autofocus works equally well in both stills and video modes where you can choose speed and responsiveness in the settings. The focusing motor is completely silent so you won't be able to hear the focusing noise and it won't be captured by an in-camera microphone. Overall, no complaints about the autofocus with this lens. The only negative of this lens in my opinion is the focus breathing. That means that the size of the objects in the frame will change as you are refocusing which may be a problem in video. Fortunately, if you are using this lens with Sony a7 IV, you can use focus breathing compensation, which completely solves this issue. It introduces additional crop, but it is not that big of an issue with a 12mm lens. This lens is parfocal, which means that the subject will stay in focus as you are zooming in and out. It is probably achieved digitally, but it doesn't really matter. This lens is not optically stabilized, but the 5.5 stop in-body image stabilization in a7R4, a7 IV and other Sony cameras is more than sufficient at these focal lengths. You can go very low with shutter speed, which is very useful for low light shooting. It also works great for video. Static shots look like on a tripod and it is more than sufficient for panning or just pointing the camera around. To sum up, Sony FE 12-24mm f2.8 GM is a very impressive lens. It combines extreme focal range, fantastic image quality, wide aperture and compact size. These are usually contradicting qualities. The sharpness is outstanding across the focal range from f2.8 to f11. The contrast and color reproduction are great as well. The build quality is very solid and it has full set of the control elements. Also worth mentioning are very nice sun stars and optical performance at f11 and f16. Basically the only negative is the focus breathing. 12-24mm to GM is definitely one of the pieces of photography and filmmaking equipment that gives you very interesting creative options and look. One last thing that I haven't talked about is the price, which is indeed hefty to say the least. It is the most expensive E-mount lens that I have ever tested, but it also provides a very unique feature set. If you can afford it, I absolutely recommend it. It is definitely on my wish list, so I will try to justify the cost and I will probably get my own copy later on. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. 
If you would like to ask anything or share opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.